What is up everybody? So we got our next video in our stock trading series using data science techniques. And today really, really excited to try out the hidden Markov model, the HMM for stock trading. So we're gonna be putting thousand real life dollars on the line today and seeing if the HMM model can give us good returns compared to other strategies we might use. So first let's explain how this is going to work. And probably most importantly and most curious question you have is what the heck are the hidden states gonna be in our hidden Markov model pertaining to stock trading. So one thing that we know is that the stock market is highly driven by people's sentiment about a given stock. If I feel very positive about Tesla stock today, and if many other people do as well, then the stock price will probably go up. If many of us feel very negative about Tesla stock today, then the price will probably go down. If many people just kind of feel meh, neutral about Tesla stock today, then probably the stock price won't move. Now, in reality, there's many, many other factors affecting the stock price, but to keep our hidden Markov model simple today, and to not add too many moving parts, we're going to be assuming that sentiment is the only thing that is going to affect the stock price, and see how much mileage we can get out of that. Now, there's only one problem with using sentiment to do stock return forecasting, and that is that sentiment is hidden. It's not like I can really go around polling everybody and ask what is your sentiment about Tesla? What is your sentiment about Microsoft stock today? There might be proxies for that online. Maybe there's polls, but in general, it's this kind of hidden variable. And that seems like the perfect place to use it would be in the hidden Markov model as a latent feature that affects the observed feature, the actual stock's returns. And so we're going to make our first assumption here, which is that we assume that sentiment is hidden, but that sentiment influences the return of the stock on any given day. And how that's gonna manifest in our model is we're going to assume that if the sentiment of a given stock is positive today, then the return distribution is gonna be this green one here, who has a mean above zero. If the sentiment on a given day is negative, the return distribution is gonna be this red one here, centered below zero. And if the sentiment is neutral, then we're gonna have this gray distribution here, which is centered pretty much at zero. One thing I did try to capture here is that the standard deviations or volatilities of these can be very different, and that's going to be a factor that is baked into the model as we're going to see. So our first assumption here is that given the sentiment, we're going to assume there's three classes today, given I know the sentiment of the stock, there's going to be some normal distribution of returns, and the mean and standard deviation of that normal distribution are going to be affected by that sentiment. The other thing we're going to assume, and the other assumption for any hidden Markov model, is that one hidden state is going to give us a probability distribution of the next day's hidden states. So we're going to assume that today's sentiment affects tomorrow's, or knowing today's sentiment gives us exactly the probability distribution for tomorrow's sentiment. So if I know that people were happy about Tesla stock today, then that's going to fix, that's going to pin down the probabilities that people are going to be happy, neutral, or sad about Tesla stock tomorrow. And so in a little picture, we're basically looking at this picture here. So each of these boxes represents a day. So let's say people were happy about Tesla stock today, then that's going to affect whether they're happy about Tesla stock tomorrow, which is going to affect whether they're sad about Tesla stock the next day. And also given each day, given we know the sentiment, our first assumption says that that's going to pin down the mean and variance of the normal distribution from which we're going to draw the return of Tesla stock today. And so in the language of hidden Markov models, these links between hidden states are called the transition probabilities. So transition probabilities. And these vertical arrows here are called the emission probabilities. So I don't have enough room to write it, but we'll do EMM emission probs. So one cool thing to do as well is think about how many parameters are going to be in this hidden Markov model. Well, we have three possibilities for the hidden state. So happy, sad, and neutral. So there's gonna be some probability of starting our Markov chain on the very first zeroth day with any of these. And because those three probabilities of starting with any of these different sentiments needs to add up to one, that's just two free parameters because once we fix those two, the third one has to be one minus the sum of those. So that's what this first one is telling us. There's gonna be two parameters for telling us how the Markov chain starts. Then what about transition probabilities? How many of them are they? So there's three states that you could have for your last day three hidden states, there's three hidden states you can have for your next day. So the transition matrix, as we're gonna see in a second, is gonna be three by three. But again, the same thing. There's only gonna be six free parameters because for any given day, once we know the probability of going from happy to happy and happy to sad, we already know the probability of going from happy to neutral because those need to add up to one. 
So that's going to give us three squared minus three more parameters. And then the last one are what's going to dictate our emission probabilities. So for each of these hidden states, happy, sad, neutral, we're going to have a normal distribution that we assume we draw our return for from that given day. And each normal distribution is pinned down by, of course, a mean and our standard deviation. So that's going to be three times two extra parameters. So in total, we're going to have 14 parameters in our model. And the reason I bring up that 14 parameters is to start talking about the pros and the cons of using a hidden Markov model for stock return prediction versus, you know, literally anything else we could use. And so the pros, one of the biggest pros not to be overlooked is interpretability. If this model does do really well, then not only does it do well at giving us good returns, it also gives us a framework by which to understand how the stock market works. So if this model does well, then it basically says that, hey, maybe today's sentiment does affect tomorrow's sentiment, and I have the exact transition matrix, as we'll see in a second, that lets me predict that. And also, because it's a rather simple model, it only has 14 parameters here, versus if we use something more complicated, like a recurrent neural network, or even more complicated ones, that's going to have an order of magnitude more parameters. So by having less parameters, this hidden Markov model is less prone to overfit. It's less prone to learn the training data exactly, and therefore it's going to be able to generalize to unseen data potentially better. Now the con is that it's a very rigid architecture. There's a lot of assumptions that you're probably kind of scratching your head at on this previous page. So does yesterday's sentiment, is that all that affects today's sentiment? Definitely not. Is today's sentiment only what's going to affect the return of the stock, definitely not. So it's a very rigid architecture, but that's the price we have to pay if we're gonna get something interpretable and something that has a lower risk of overfitting. So now let's get to the part that you probably came here for, looking at some actual results and then seeing how the strategy does overall, especially stacked up to something like a recurrent neural network strategy, which does something similar to this, but in a more complicated, more flexible way. So before getting to those overall results, I want to use the interpretability that we got from this model to show what is the transition matrix for the Tesla stock. So we see here's the transition matrix, and it's really cool because we can say that on the rows we have the previous day's hidden states, on the columns we have the next day's hidden states. So this is saying if people's sentiment about the stock was positive yesterday, then there's a 3% chance of it being positive today a 28% chance of it being neutral today, and a 69% chance of it being negative today. So positive is most likely followed by negative. Now negative is most likely followed by neutral, and neutral is most likely followed by positive. So we see we have this kind of cool repeating pattern if we look just at the maximum probabilities. So that is to say, let me use purple for this, if it's positive, we said that the most likely is going to be negative. If it's negative, then the most likely is going to be neutral. And if it's neutral, then the most likely is going to be positive. So we have this kind of positive goes to negative, goes to neutral, goes to positive, goes to negative, kind of repeating pattern going on here. And so that tells us all about the transition probabilities of the model learned for Tesla stock. And so by the way, this model was trained on data from March of 2023 to March of 2024. And now we can look at the emission probabilities. So the emission probabilities say that if the sentiment was positive for Tesla stock on any given day in that range, then the distribution of returns, as we expected, would be centered slightly at something positive, but they have a pretty big standard deviation, as you would expect. Because this is a stock return problem, after all, and so, of course, there's going to be a lot of volatility, probably because we didn't capture a lot of dynamics, and this model did have a very rigid architecture, so that does make sense. If the sentiment was neutral today, then as we see, we center pretty much on zero with a, again, large standard deviation. If the sentiment was negative, we center on something less than zero and we have a pretty big standard deviation here. So I really love the hidden Markov model just because it is so interpretable. With just these two little visualizations here, we have a framework, probably not a correct framework, but we have some framework to go off of for how the stock market works for Tesla stock over the last year. And now we're going to get to the results, but really quickly, how do we actually use this model? Let's say we're deciding whether or not we want to buy Tesla stock. How do we predict the return of Tesla stock tomorrow using this model? Well, we're going to look at what was the sentiment according to this model yesterday. So let's say that the sentiment was neutral yesterday. And then we use the transition matrix to come up with the most likely sentiment tomorrow, which is going to be positive. Then given we think the sentiment's going to be positive tomorrow, we look at the corresponding 
normal distribution, and we take a draw from this normal distribution, which could totally be negative, but is more likely to be positive. So let's say we take a draw right here. And so that's going to be our expected return for Tesla stock tomorrow. And we do the same thing for all the other stocks in the S&P 500. We go through the exact same process, and then we rank all those expected tomorrow's returns descending. We pick the top 10, and we're going to take our $1,000 and put $100 into each of these top 10 stocks, and we're going to see what happened with those stocks in a day, and we're gonna calculate those returns, and I'm gonna show you those now. So first, here's a baseline strategy, which is called the random strategy. This means I just pick 10 stocks at random in the S&P 500. If I did do that, the return in the next day would have been 0.02%, so 0.02%. So slightly positive, but as we expected, nothing to write home about, pretty much zero. So with the hidden Markov model, with the place where we actually invested our one K or 1K dollars, what was the return? The return, and here's the part we all care about, da da da, drum roll please, brrr, the return is 0.2%. So it's 10 times higher than the random strategy, so we're doing something right. And overall, we made a solid $2, so this is going to be $2 that we made, so huzzah, we can buy a quarter of a coffee or something with that. And the other thing we want to look at is with the recurrent neural network model, which is a more complex architecture, what would we have gotten? So if we did the same experiment using a recurrent neural network model instead, using the exact same time period, then we would have got a return of 0.4%, or double of what we got with the hidden Markov model. So of course there's a big grain of salt, many grains of salt to be taken with all this. This is just the returns from one day. The stock market is notoriously difficult to predict, so who knows what these numbers would look like if I did this experiment one day earlier or one day later. So I'm gonna put asterisks, asterisks everywhere, everywhere, just to say that, you know what, this doesn't mean that the recurrent neural network model is always gonna do double as much as the HMM, but on this given day, it probably would have been better to use the recurrent neural network model instead of the HMM model. But it was really cool to see that we still did get some kind of positive return that was better than random using the hidden Markov model. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for more stock trading strategies we can try, always, always welcome in the comments section below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this one here, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.